Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today, we are honoured to have a guy all the way from Venezuela. He's already given me a brief of uh, how Venezuela was a successful country 50 years ago and about the migration. We hope you can recap on that for you guys. And uh, we're just going to hear and learn. So nice to have you here today. <laughs> there you are. Got it? Got it. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if it's recording now. Yeah, it is recording. Oh yeah, I got it. Um, so yeah, my name is Francisco. Um, I'm from Venezuela. Uh, my driver today asked me, where are you from? Uh, you look Spanish, but I was expecting Spanish and Italian. Why are you Portuguese? I uh, say, you're close, you're very close. Uh, because I'm from Venezuela, it's a country that it was a melting pot. Uh, had hundreds of thousands of Portuguese and Italian and Spanish immigrants. Um, that in the 50s, 60s and 70s, they came to this very prosperous country. Um, it's the country with more oil in the world, it was a solid democracy back then. And, and I was telling him that not only Europeans went there, but also people from South America, because they were under dictatorship. So Chile, people from Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and, and also 4 million Colombians came into Venezuela as well. So it became, it went from being an 8 million people country to 20 million full of immigrants. Um, for example, my mother is from Colombia and my father is from Spain, two, two immigrants. And, and look at me, I'm also an immigrant in, in London. Uh, that's Venezuela, it was a beautiful country. And, um, so tell us, who was the indigenous people? Who were they? Were they who was there first? Uh, yes, they, they were there first. They are still there. What are they called? Uh, well, there are many tribes. They are not, you know, as famous as Incas or Aztecas mm -hmm. from Mexico and Peru. Um, they are not as advanced, uh, but they were quite happy and very smart in terms of uh, fighting the Spanish conquistadors. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you have uh, many of them. You have the Pemones that they're still around and they're still uh, taking care of their, their places. Uh, Caribes, Yanomamis, there are many tribes, mm. but none of them were as you know strong or evolved mm. as the, Mex the ones that you can find in Mexico or Peru. Do they have their own areas where they live and they kind of run their own thing or? They used to be respected until the democracy fell. They used to be, uh, they have like a third of the country. It's not actually, you know, theirs. But pretty much no one goes there. <laughs> so when, when it's, do you say it's not actually there? Well, it's not like in like in the United States that you know they have like some independence; they can have their own laws or whatever. Okay. Um, but it but it's a big big area where I mean it's 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 almost a third for the country, and, and most of the people just don't go there. There are no mm -hmm. roads and so on. Okay. Oh, so it's rainforest. Yes, exactly. Okay. exactly. So so. Venezuela is next to Brazil, is that right? It's in the north of Brazil. Yes, so it's just like an extension of Brazil in the sense of terrain. It's got rainforest, it, it, heavy... Yeah, that's really, yeah, that's that's correct. It's, um, in a way, a part of the country is an extension, um, but also it's an extension of Colombia and it's an extension of, for example, something like Cuba, mm -hmm. because we have the Caribbean on the north, a large, large Caribbean uh, coast, very unique. It's those beaches are impossible to find somewhere else. And then, but you also have big mountains like the the uh, Andes. Um, sorry, I don't know the Andes mountains. The Andes mountains. And so you have um, snow in in our country, oh, okay. and it's beautiful and it's very high. Um, you know Jamaica, yeah. Yes. How big is Venezuela to Jamaica. I don't probably, uh, probably I don't know, hundred times larger. It? So it's really it's huge. huge. Yeah, you can put UK. Uh, I don't know, four or five times. It's... Oh, okay. Because Jamaica three times, population three times. of three point five million, and you said four million 
uh, Colombians came over. Yes, so, so we of, yeah. we peak on thirty something, thirty five. Okay. Um, so you got a lot of land then per cap. But right now, um, yes, we have a lot of land. But right now, um, we are second and very close to Syria, the, the Syrian crisis, uh, refugee crisis. So, um, so we are now losing a lot of population. Since I left, probably over five million people left. But the recent crisis is around 3.5 million that had to walk out. The, the distance that they are walking out of the country is the equivalent to, of walking from Syria to London. Mm. So it's, it's really hard. And, and the support they're getting is, is like not even 5% of what a Syrian refugee will get. Uh, so Colombia is taking the, the biggest toll. Uh, some people is walking at the beginning of the crisis, the refugee crisis, they were walking from Venezuela to Colombia, to Ecuador, to Peru, all the way down to Chile, because Chile is a prosperous country. Right now, what is happening right now is that because they're getting green cards and, and political asylum in the United States, they are going all the way up. They're going Colombia, Panama, all the Central American countries, Mexico, and then to the States. And right now they're crosses, crossing to the States in the hundreds every day. Mm. And and it's it's heartbreaking. But they don't want to go in boat, by boat. Uh, sorry? They don't want to go by boat. They try and, and they fail so many times. They try to emigrate to, to a small uh, islands in the Caribbean and, and many people die on, on the way. Um, so it is it's really, really terrible what's going on. What's the problem why this is all started? So, it, it, as I said before, it was a very solid democracy for many years. It was a, a haven for Europeans and, and Latin Americans. And, um, but people get tired of the political system because it, the politics uh, can be frustrating. Uh, frustrating. Uh, we always want improvements and, and things don't improve the, 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 uh, the peace that you want, right? Um, so at a moment, uh, at the same time, Fidel Castro from Cuba was always trying to put somebody in power in Venezuela because he knew Venezuela was so rich, always so rich. It was it's the country with more oil in the world. And he finally did. He, he tried with this um, military coup um and you put him in by force no 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 he 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 convenes with his ideas some mm, for some of the military forces in venezuela so you may have heard a guy called chavez um so that's chavez is the fidel castro of venezuela basically he tried uh, a, a military coup and he failed he was put in jail um, he felt miserably, by the way. He he lied to the to the um, the guys that were under his command, saying he didn't tell them that it was a military coup. And he was putting and because it was a democratic country with rule of law. Of course, it was not perfect. It was not a still a developed country, but it was you know pretty much fine. Um, they put him out of jail because there was a problem in the process. So the due pro there was a problem in the due process and they free Chavez, uh, a, a guy that tried to kill the president. So as you can see, he was, you know, a civilized country. So Chavez uh, is not Che, che Guevara, is it? Something different. No, it's not Che Guevara, oh. uh, but it's, uh, in, in a way, he loves this, this kind of people. <laughs> so he went into the presidential elections uh, um, in 1998. And he promised change. He promised to put people in jail. It's a, it was a very similar um, speech to what you can hear from Corbyn. And actually, Corbyn was a big fan, a big supporter. And but recently, he deleted everything from his page, from his blog. But um, those, those, and, and when they interview him, he will say he will believe in, in, in free market and all of this, because people fear what he could do. He lied to everyone. He say he believe in free market and believe in all of this. Um, I take it you don't like this guy. Well, when somebody destroys your country, I mean, right now you cannot find toilet paper, water, electricity, has, gas, I, oil, oil, petrol. You cannot. Can I ask? Yes. Has America put any sanctions on Venezuela? Yes, uh, that happened. How long have they had it for? 
Uh, let me remember. Is it Bound... Before, before he got in power. No, or no, no, no. Just as he got in power. Uh, no, 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 not at all. The, uh, it, it, when he got in power, was uh, Bush, and he didn't pay attention to him. Uh, I mean, Chavez went to New York to the United Nations and called Bush. Um, what is it? Um, uh, El Diablo, you know, uh, Satanas, Satan. They didn't even reply to him. They didn't even care. They actually helped him because because of the war in Iraq, the terrible war, um, uh, the oil went, that, and he actually, actually Bush saved Chavez because Chavez was getting very unpopular because, I mean, he promised so many things, but he couldn't deliver because, you know, it, he, he still had the same budget as the previous presidents. And no, then- No sanctions was on. Chavez. No, sanctions came, uh, started like three years ago. Okay. It's a very, uh, and it's, and its sanctions are something that is very specific. Like you cannot buy guns and stuff like that. But if you want to buy food or medical supplies, he, they can. All right. So then why have you not got that in the country? Then? Because do you know corruption? Have you heard about corruption? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way beyond that. When you see a corruption case anywhere in the world, you're talking about five million, ten million, fifty million. Let me explain you something. Just one case of one guy that confessed in New York. We're talking about one billion dollars case. And he confessed, you know what? Nobody knows about him. Do you know why? Because the scale of the corruption is huge. If you see how much money came into the country during those years, something similar to any other country that is a, a, an oil producer, it's about one trillion dollars. That money went nowhere disappear you see the other countries they they keep growing even non-oil countries in latin america they keep growing not the case in venezuela so i mean how do you explain over five million people emigrating over three million refugees that's that you cannot and, and very few um blog youtubers like um and, and people from new media like you they travel all around the world they won't go to iran north korea and they go to Venezuela, and I remember the words of this uh, New Zealand guy. He said, "I'm not." He made like ten videos about Venezuela. He said, "This is more depressing than North Korea. This is incredible." He went to Iran and had a lot of fun. And you see, Iran is under sanctions, and they have everything. And he said, in the last video, answering um, Q and A, answering questions, he said, "Look, I'm not going to talk about sanctions because here in Venezuela, nobody talks about sanctions." because they know this is not about sanctions. If they want to buy something that you see important stuff only for the rich military that, that has all the money. So if you want to buy whatever new brand new car, you can get it. They, they'll bring it to you, no problem. So the sanctions are a joke. And, and the, the reason of the sanctions is that all the money that was coming in for the little oil that was being produced, that's the other thing. They were producing before Chavez, 3.5 million barrels per day. Do you know how much they're producing now? Under under 600,000. Under 600,000. And you know who was the main buyer? Mm. And who, who and it was pay, paying cash all the time? Like, here you go. Gaddafi. Huh? Gaddafi. The United States was the best buyer, the, the best um, economic um, partner that we always have. And what happened the, the problem is that that money was going was being used to um oppress the people so the more money you were giving them the more money that was being used to oppress the people in the streets so i mean it makes sense there is there is a debate but basically you're giving you know more money for weapons and stuff yeah, i don't understand why if you're making money and oil why you need to oppress your people because people is not people want freedom People want. Uh, yeah, but if you're making money, if I'm a dictator, but, I'm making money. I've got because people. Uh, I can give the people jobs and they can. Be they, they, that, that's that's, that's the logic that I will follow as well. But their their logic is to, to to in order to control the country, they destroy it. And it's it took me years to accept that. I'm gonna give you an example. 2015, when I came to London. Uh, we won the National Assembly, which is, we don't have, you know, two Congress like other countries. We have one Congress, like here in UK, uh, one parliament. So we won the part of, when I say we, I mean the opposition. After 15 years of uh, Chavista's government, 
we finally won over uh, around 70%. So you have, you know, a total majority, a, a big majority. Guess what the Chavista uh, government decided to do, Maduro. He just basically destroyed the, the Congress and created his own Congress. Mm. That's exactly the moment when all developed nations and countries around Venezuela say, no, that's dictatorship. You lost the elections even that you have all the resources to go against the, the opposition that had no resources, mm -hmm. you still lost the elections and you decided to mm, destroy this Congress, to put your own Congress, now we can call you a dictatorship. And they don't recognize it. If you ask Siri, who is the president of Venezuela, they're going to tell you too. Because we elected a president mm -hmm. and, the, and the president decided to not, not uh, respect it. So it's, it's a, that's... That's the kind of president that you see, that a president that is not willing to be uh, democratic. So you can say the corruption goes in two levels. Democratic corruption, people that, you know, get there, steal money, whatever, but they accept that if they lose. And this kind of uh, pre democracies, that is fake democracy like in Cuba or North Korea, where they're always doing um, um, elections, but they don't, they don't actually, you know, they just fake, like Belarusia. That's, that's that's the one that started everything. That he's showing me a They're picture like of Chavez. Okay. Any Venezuelan wouldn't like him, and and it's all propaganda. They... Well, isn't he the one? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you're wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> isn't he the one that said about taking land from the rich to give to the poor? But it's, it, yeah, go go and try to find some food now. If you're producing food and you're selling it, I mean, let me give you an example. The Chinese, the big ally of this guy of Chavez, they went there because imagine the economic crisis we don't have food we don't have anything and and <laughs> there were you know people from china and people from venezuela in in, in the in this conference mm -hmm. and and the venezuelan guy said well how do you control the economy so the rich people don't get and the chinese were like no no we don't control the economy it's just free market how, that's what you, the chinese learned this 30 years ago and that's that's why they, they took so many people out of poverty so it do you think do you think they took uh you know um the land and give it to poor people there's no food made you have to live are you producing food for everyone just keep doing it there's plenty of land this is just populism um and it's also propaganda like the propaganda saying that they, he paid the external debt venezuela had very little debt back then and right now it's in amazingly huge so it, it is you know make people believe like trump you know you see how trump lies all the time mm -hmm. and you cannot you know people kind of fact check them because we are not computers and it's easy to fool so many people we have trump before trump we have Trump 20 years before trump is this guy saying lies and, and telling lies to people mm -hmm. and the thing that saved him was that before he got in or oil because our oil is very heavy it was eight dollars per barrel when the when he became president, he started became very unpopular because um, oil, I mean, oil was still the same and, and things didn't change. And then with the Iraq war, oil went over a hundred. So imagine how popular you can be if your income is, you know, twelve times larger. Mm -hmm. to, to say something, from eight to a hundred. So he had all the money in the war for years. Things didn't improve. Can I ask you something? Um, with the the rest of the world getting involved, do you think that's a wise thing, or do you think the people should just uh, one day wake up? And we tried. We wake up. We we believe it's it's hard for you to see, uh, but we have tr we have been fighting this for years but and how years. Have you been fighting? All ways, democratic ways, uh, fighting the elections in the streets, all can even the military try. And if you're a military, we couldn't get the guy out. We couldn't. I, it's easy to say. I, I know what you. How that works? Sorry. I was thinking how that works. If the military, they, uh, well, they they think think the about military. Fidel Castro, or or I'm sorry to say this, but uh, it's a terrible thing. But think about um, the, the guy in uh, in 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 Spain. Um, oh my God, the guy from Ferrol, um, Franco, Francisco Franco. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I heard that comment many times in Spain. Why do you organize and get him out if he's so bad? Well, how long did it take you to get uh, Frank out? Was it 30 years until the guy actually died? And it's not that easy. Think about the guys in North Korea. Think about the guys in, in, in Cuba uh, or any African dictatorship. It's really not that easy. And especially these guys, because it, the oil was so important, became so rich, they were able to pay for propaganda and they were able to pay the Cubans and the Russians to uh, give them uh, help. So they were able to, to say, well, this is what you have to do to stay in power do all of this they give them the recipes and they keep following and they don't only do that they actually have thousands of cubans in venezuela if you want to get your id uh which is kind of very important in, in venezuela it's the thing that we use every day is 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 a cuban people working in a building that wants to give you the id if you want to register a property it, it's you know something critical for a country is the Cuban people who register your property and when you see always when you see um, the police or you see the military they are surrounded by Cuban people that is you know controlling what's so going you're on saying, so yeah, that's what you're saying you're saying basically you're controlled by foreign power in in I, I won't say that some people say that what I can tell you is that it's not easy to get these people out because there is a lot of not transferred knowledge from the Cubans and the Russians on how to control a country like this. How, how long have you lived in England and what did you do in Venezuela before you come here? I, I was a student. I was studying mechanical engineering in Universidad Central de Venezuela. Um, and well, as it, I mean, imagine this country. This is not a country where, you know, external and what Chavez wanted you to believe that you know uh, BP came and got all the oil or whatever we were we had the second largest oil company in the world and it was a national company that we built ourselves so what I'm trying to tell you is that the universities in Venezuela were so good because you knew you graduated as as engineer or something similar or something related with the oil industry, you're gonna have a job and you're gonna have a good job and an even better education inside the companies. Mm -hmm. So we got the the foreign companies out of the country in the 70s. So it's all propaganda. He actually got them back in, and there is a, a, a French documentary uh, documentary about it. So Francis. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm hearing what you're saying. What if you? What's the future hold for Venezuela then? How would you move forward if you're going to be the new leader? How would you get the country back on track? Well, those those are two different questions. The first one, yeah, we don't know. We don't want to talk about it because we get we. When the moment over three million people walk out of your country and lose everything, leave everything behind, even their own kids, their own family, mm -hmm. it's because they gave up on any hope. They don't know if something's going to... When they destroy the Congress to take over, they say, oh, you're not going to play by the rules at all. Okay, there's no hope here. So how are we going to get out of this? It's very complicated. We were hoping for military insurrection, but that happened over 10 times and they managed to put it down. That's not going to happen. They know what they're doing. It didn't happen in North Korea or Japan or, or, or Cuba. That's, we don't know what's how to get out of it. We need all. All we we all agree. We need foreign help. We cannot take down um, this kind of dictator dictatorship by ourselves. That's super clear. And that's the play of sanctions. And that's the play of international pressure to to try to isolate these people and and try to make them negotiate. Um, and it's agreed by the Democrats and um, uh, Republicans, for example, in the United States. Um, if, if I were to help, um, I mean, I'll follow the advice of many. He has, don't get me wrong, I am a socialist. I consider myself a leftist person. I believe in that. Uh, and I, I, and what I think what we need right now is a lot of um, help um, to everyone that is not even eating. You know how many millions of kids in Venezuela cannot go to school because they were mm, uh, fainting at school 
they were fainting because they don't eat. Mm. They're eating trash in the streets. Yeah, so that's the priority yeah. number. But we cannot get humanitarian help because of the dictator. We cannot, we, there were trucks in Colombia, hundreds of them, full of humanitarian help, which is food, basically, and, 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 and medicine. And they didn't allow it in. So we, right now, we cannot even get humanitarian help. Are there, um, is the capital of Venezuela, is that based on the coast? Uh, it's close, it's very close to the coast, but it's, it's not hard because it's a bit high, it's uh, behind a, a big mountain, it's called Caracas. So what I'm thinking, if it's very fertile country... It is incredible fertile and, and, and full and of water. Got, yeah, and you've got, so you've got fishes, you've got all those things. I, I hear the same things in Spain, mate. <laughs> I hear those close questions. It's not that simple. I mean, you live here, you, you see this flat that we're passing by. Yeah. How do you get food? You can't. Yeah. And it's, it's just way too many people. And and but if we had the Thames, if the Thames was clean, and there'd be fishes and stuff. Yeah, but, but, but it's, it's just right. it, it is really not that you. What would you do? You're a driver, and, and there's and and remember, what happened if you have a tractor, and it breaks down? You, you because you cannot get uh, oh. dollars for your for your local currency because it's forbidden by the law. And you, they destroy the, the, the economy so badly that nobody really can buy your food, the one that you're bringing from uh, the countryside. And, and even if they, you do, if you try to buy um, something for, for your tractor that broke down, you cannot make it happen because it's going to be super expensive. So at the beginning, I remember experts explaining this is a strategy. This is not, you know, mismanagement. Uh, and I couldn't believe it. I can. Why will anyone want to destroy the country? And and you always want to be, you know, a good president. And and they were right. They were right because right now it's so easy to control the country because you cannot go and protest if what happened if somebody cuts you uh, or you have a broken arm. How are you gonna fix yourself? You didn't even have food. You don't even have food. Imagine trying to get medicines. So people is it, so busy with their daily, li daily lives, trying to survive or trying to get out. Nobody's going to protest. Forget about politics. You cannot go, how, what are you going to do politics about a people that is not willing to respect human rights? Mm. Two days ago, uh, the international um, court in, ha in the Hague in Netherlands. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm saying everything wrong, but it, they they move the case of Venezuela of human rights violations way forward because they're really concerned about what's going on. The, uh, I think they're probably concerned because of all your oil. The, 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 Sudan, the, the, had the, a, Sudan the, the, and many places have had a major the, the issues. Hack, the, no, it, it, is, it, it is different because we have been reporting like the, what, the way I'm doing it. We have been doing it. We have been very, really outspoken. The hack that has no uh, in, um, um, interest in, in this kind of things. I, I yeah. don't know the name of the per they they don't. Yeah. If they were, if look, if anything, we are doing a favor to the United States because the, the United States right now is exporting oil. If we push oil out, if you make Venezuela a democracy, they're going to produce oil again, and we're going to bring the price down. You don't want that. The, but the United States have, what if that's the case, I mean, there was so a case it's, of, of it's a war. There's no advantage in America that you lot are in trouble in, business-wise. Uh, you can say that, but you know what? It's not in their advantage of, of their national security because we're in business with Hezbollah, Iran, all the bad players, all the players that they don't like. The, I, it, it, it is never a good business to have a poor, bis uh, a poor neighbor. You don't want that. Oh, I'm selling more. Yeah, but the, the guy is a thief or, or, or a terror for your daughters. You don't want somebody that is terrorizing, terrorizing the, the neighborhood. That he, if somebody tries to escape, for example, the terrorist people from ETA in Spain, where, was there a heaven? Venezuela. There was uh, an investigation from a journalist in Spain mm -hmm. that he wanted to join, uh, what is it, Al-Qaeda. And... And he, this is a guy that is incredibly famous. He spent like five years on each case. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good driving skills here. <laughs> um, and and he, he started to, you know, he went to Africa and then to, he moved around the world and he finally got in. 
and the, when they went going to train him, guess where he was sent to? Venezuela. Mm -hmm. That was a training camp. So you don't want that guy there. It doesn't matter if he's going to produce a bit of oil and he's going to bring the price down. You don't want uh, the, the country with more oil in the world or whatever, mm -hmm. or right in your neighborhood, uh, playing in favor of Putin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is that simple. Who are your allies? Oh, well, my allies is North Korea, Iran, Putin, China, and Cuba. Mm, I guess you're a bad player, mate. I guess you don't care about uh, human rights. I guess this is all you, you care about is oppressive. They, you have been in power for 20 years. How come people is it's leaving the country and nobody, no one can eat? Mm, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, so, so in answer to my question, you feel foreign intervention will help save the day for Venezuela? It, it, it is very hard to accept that it, because we didn't want it. I mean, because I always I look at history and I say usually where you have foreign intervention, especially when it involves London, France, England, um, uh, sorry, England and America, it doesn't usually work out for that country. Wait, wait one second. France, UK, yeah. America. Yeah. I, they, I cannot, I cannot, I can't think of for at least I'm living in a country right now. Yeah. That he was freed by Americans, helping the French and, and British yeah, from from an evil uh, empire. So, well, you're saying England was freed by yes. by America? Yes. Do you remember that? Oh, are you talking about the war? Yes. Right. Uh, as an ex-military yeah. person, I contend, I contend with that strongly. I said America, yeah, jumped in, but they we. It's more about arms. No, than I, I I know, I know, I know. But what what I mean is foreign intervention can help and and it otherwise it's gonna be wait 20 years it's gonna be North yeah, Korea what I'm it's, saying to you it, it's gonna be too late my fear for you guys is it will cost you dearly but why do you think we try democratic why do you think we try all kind of things before that uh -huh, okay. uh -huh. it's not like we started 20 years ago hey we need him no 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 we uh -huh. try everything and, uh -huh. and, and it's, it didn't happen uh -huh. so I hear you. It's, it's hard to accept. I hear you. Well, thanks for that interview. You have been a great guest. <laughs> and we wish you well. We learn a lot. Hey. We hope you liked that Taxi Chronicles interview. Don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am British Standard Time.